Hey everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today we're going to tube roll the 12AX7 close cousin, the 12AT7. So like the 12AX7, the 12AT7 was released in 1947 and in fact was available a few months before the 12AX7. In Europe, this tube is the ECC 81. Same tube, different name. The 12AT7 is a medium gain miniature dual triode with an MU or gain of 60. The 12AX7 has a gain of 100. Why talk about the 12AT7s at all? Why not just stick with vintage 12AX7s? In two words, price and availability. A vintage mullet or Telefunken is going to cost serious money and the situation is only going to get worse as these tubes age. In many cases, you can safely substitute a 12AT7 for a 12AX7. Same pinout, same heater voltage, but with a lower gain. So up first is a mil-spec version of the 12AT7, a Mullard 8162. What do I mean when I say mil-spec? Well, that's short for military specification. Normally that means more robust construction, longer life, and tighter quality control. Sometimes it's just the same regular tube, but selected off the factory floor for tighter tolerances. Either way, a mil-spec tube is often better. Not always, but often. So how does this Mullard sound? In short, amazing. Very tight and full base, something mullards are often lacking in. The mullard's silky smooth mid-range and some very nice high frequency detail. I've subbed this tube in my custom 12AX7 phono preamp and even with its lower gain it did just fine. In fact it sounded terrific. So how do I identify a real mullard? We've talked about this before. We've got two seams for the glass molding. That's how the glass is made. We've got a nice description of what this tube is here, and that makes me suspicious. Mullard's printing often fell right off of the tubes as they aged, and there are a lot of fake Mullard's out there. So how do we go further and check to make sure that this is not a fake? Now, one of the reasons why the printing is probably still good is that this is a later issued tube, so it's relatively young in the vintage. Uh, tube world. So I would check in my inventory and I'd look at the plate structure and I'd look at the under chassis wiring and I would compare them. If those agreed with what I have in stock I know I'm getting pretty I'm pretty certain that this is the real McCoy but right here on almost all, not all Mullards and not all European vintage tubes, but many of them, is an acid etched factory coat. I don't know if you can see it, folks. It's on the shoulder of all these European tubes that have them. And in this case, in every case, the first letter or symbol is the factory code. And in this case, it's R, which is Mitchum, which makes this a fabulous mullard. So we've got confirmation this is a real Mullard. So, what's next? Next is a Jan 12AT7, Phillips Sylvania. Jan just means Joint Army Navy or mil spec. This is an example of a quality tube that doesn't sub well in the 12AX7 slot. It is microphonic and as a result the noise floor is above acceptable. Once the music starts to play, this tube sounds great, but if you're picky about your noise floor or how noisy your system sounds, I would take a pass on this tube. Now in a true 12AT7 circuit, this tube may work just fine. Next we've got the GE 12AT7 WB or 6201 and you can, let's see if you can see it folks. It's acid etched right here on the top near the shoulder. 
there we go. This is a mil spec tube. Often when you see both the 12AT7 and a four digit number, that lets you know that this is a mil spec, industrial or special application tube. So what does this tube sound like? It's another amazing tube in the 12AX7 sub slot. It's got good solid well-defined bass, a nice mid-range, and nice detailed high frequencies. This tube, you can see here the five stars, this tube is in the GE five-star premium line and not surprisingly is nice and quiet an all-around great tube and best of all affordable. Last up today is another GE tube. GE stands for General Electric by the way. This is a GE Jan 12AT7 WC. The previous one was the WB or up here you can see it's etched right into the tube 6201. Now what's with the WC? attached to the end of the tube designation. This is just a series or tube model designation. So the previous GE was a WB, this is a WC. So this is the next tube in that line as, as far as development goes. Everything I said about the, the previous GE, WB, applies to this tube, which isn't surprising as they are almost identical. Without the WC code, they'd be hard, if not impossible, to tell apart. So there you go. Three great tubes, 12AT7 tubes, that could be subbed as a 12AX7. Will they work in every situation? No. But you can safely plug a 12AT7 into any 12AX7 circuit. Nothing is going to go wrong. The worst that's going to happen is it won't sound as good as it should. And the best that can happen is that you discover a vintage tube that is, is equivalent to the 12AX7, a lower gain 12AX7, let's call it, that's affordable and available. So lastly, let's talk about microphonics. Mullards are famous for being microphonic. In fact, back in the day, repairmen in the UK would choose other brands of tubes because they had so much trouble with noise from mullards. Today, I think we're a little more accepting of the mullard um, tendency to mic be microphonic because they are, they sound, they're some of the best sounding tubes in the world. They're up there with the very best, with, um, with Amperex, with the Philips tubes, with Telefunken. So, how would we test the tube for microphonics? What I do is I put it in circuit, so in my, in this case, in my phono or my control preamp, I warm it up, I set the volume to a normal listening volume, and I take a very lightweight tapper. This happens to be a bamboo knitting needle for Anyone who has a wife that knits, they always have an extra needle lying around that they don't want. And then I just tap it gently. Now, most tubes, even really good tubes, will be somewhat slightly microphonic. It's going to be normal to hear a little bit of a ringing sound from the speakers. And in the case of some of the early vintage Mullards, especially the high gain ones, the 12AX7s, they are fairly to moderately to even high microphonics. What's happening inside the tube is that the circuit of the tube is acting like a microphone. It's picking up the vibrations in the room and it's amplifying it into the signal path. So a lot of tubes like these GEs sound good and are very quiet tubes, very low microphonic tubes. That's a good attribute, especially if you're going to be, let's say, on stage with a lot of decibels coming back towards your equipment. At home, a little bit of microphonics is not going to be noticeable. In fact, I'm convinced that some of that Mullard sound is actually the 
low microphonics of the tube getting into the signal path and producing some very pleasant harmonics that help fill in the sound and especially fill in that mid-range. So that's microphonics in a nutshell and if you stayed with me this long, oh, how about some discount codes for the store. Feel free to use them as often as you want. And this is Jim from Valves and More signing off. Cheers everyone!